Right turn, point numbers, squad, one! Steady up there, number four, pull yourself back. As part of this leadership course, you must be able to teach a drill lesson. Pickford, you will teach attention, stand at ease, and stand easy. Greco, you'll be responsible for teaching marching and halting on Wednesday. Schultz, you will be required to teach on Thursday. Turns and inclines at the halt and the about turn at the halt. Strong, you will be required lesson. to teach on hmm. Friday. Well, certainly not my first choice, but what the heck. People teach drill every day. No reason why I can't do it. Are there any questions? Strong. Where will I find the reference material, Sergeant? Good question. Most of the reference material has already been issued to you people. However, you will find all you need in the Canadian Forces Manual of Drill and Ceremonial, APD 201. Are there any other questions? Dismissed. Since the time of the Roman legions, competence in drill movements has earned universal recognition and respect. Military personnel with this skill are regarded as highly trained, well-disciplined, and professional service members. Drill that is well executed develops individual pride, mental alertness, precision, and esprit de corps. As an instructor, it is on the parade square that you have the opportunity to develop a pattern of immediate obedience and correct performance. To gain this, you must be fair and firm and display the correct attitude towards the individual and squad. Weather will be a factor in picking the location for the class. Cold or wet students will have difficulty learning. Ensure students are not looking into the sun or standing in puddles if you choose an outdoor location. Other distractions such as noise or visible activities near the area of instruction should be avoided. Depending on the class, the instructor might require training aids. For example, a drum, metronome, or pace stick. Soldiers are taught drill to improve coordination of mind and body to instill instinctive obedience to commands, and so that they'll begin to work as members of a team. As the instructor assigned to conduct a drill class, it's your job to make sure these crucial lessons are properly learned. I remember my drill instructor, Sergeant Cameron. Now there was a guy to put you through your paces. Still, if you were ever in a tight spot, that's the kind of guy you'd want beside you. I wonder what I'll be like. Right, you'll now carry on this movement on your own. As an instructor, you must set the example when giving a drill period. The way you project yourself throughout the class will be an example for the student to follow. But equally important, the impression you make will remain not only during the drill class itself, but for years to come. The way you move in front of your class is very important. When conducting a drill class, you shall stand at attention unless demonstrating or checking individuals. When in motion, movements must be sharp and complete. Concentrate on your language at all times. Right turn, point numbers, squad, one! Ensure that you pronounce the commands clearly and with the correct cautionary and executive commands. Profanity and personal sarcasm shall not be used. Instructions should be brief and sharp, with clear-cut explanations and demonstrations. The bulk of the period should be spent in practice. Right turn, boy numbers, squad, what? 
Are you still slightly back there, number five? Sergeant Cameron was so decisive, like he always knew just what to do. He must have known these materials inside and out. Once you've been given your assignment, review the conduct of a drill lesson format which can be found in your CF Manual of Drill and Ceremonial, Article 109. It's the point form explanation of conduct of a drill lesson. Use these materials to create a lesson format for your lesson. Okay. Let's make a format for the lesson. Turns and inclines at the halt. Also, about turns at the halt. Number one, state your name. Well, that I can handle. Good day. My name is Corporal Schultz. Number two, position your class in a proper formation. Ensure they can see you without any obstruction to their view. Remember, Class distractions during drill periods will prevent you from accomplishing your aim. Hmm, makes sense. Next, number the trainees. Palm the right! Number! Then proceed with a review of a previous class, or basic drill, as a warm-up. This will focus attention on the drill lesson they're about to receive. Remember, throughout the drill lesson, it is essential you correct any faults at once. This applies to errors in performing the movements associated with the current lesson, or procedures which have been learned previously. After review, Reform the members into the appropriate formation for the current lesson. You will then state the lesson to be taught and why the members are learning it. What we will now learn today in the next 40 minutes is turns and inclines at the halt. And the about turn at the halt. Reason why you must learn this is in order to change direction but not formation. You will use these maneuvers throughout your entire Canadian Forces career. This lesson will be taught in stages. When I demonstrate and explain, you will listen. There will be a test at the end of this drill lesson, so pay close and strict attention as to how the movements are taught. Are there any questions? Sergeant Cameron must have memorized this material cover to cover. I mean, no matter what he did, the guy just looked so professional. The book says personal dress and bearing are of utmost importance. Males have to make sure they have a proper haircut, and females have to have their hair neatly tied up. Uniforms should be sharply pressed, lint-free, and boots should have a high gloss. But paperwork and appearance only get you so far. When you get in front of the squad, you have to perform. That guy had the confidence that comes with experience. In this lesson, you will learn to perform these movements, turns and inclines at the halt, as well as about turn at the halt. These movements are used to change direction, but not formation. You will use these movements throughout your military career. This lesson will be taught in five stages. There will be a practical test at the end of the lesson. So watch and listen and do not move until I tell you to. Turns and inclines are executed to change direction. Right and left turns change direction by 90 degrees. About turns change direction by 180 degrees, right and left inclines change direction by 45 degrees. We'll begin with the right turn. Pay attention to my complete demonstration of the right turn. Right turn! One, two, three, one! For ease of learning, these movements are broken down into squads. 
Having demonstrated the movement, inform the squad that for instructional purposes, the movement will be broken down into individual drill movements. Then demonstrate the first part of the movement. Next, demonstrate and explain the first part of the movement All to your class. All that happens is the knees are braced, the body remains erect with the arms to the sides. You pivot on the heel of the right foot and the toe of the left foot. Raising the toe of the right foot and the heel of the left foot simultaneously. On completion of the movement, the weight of the body is placed on the right foot. The left knee is braced with the heel of the left foot raised slightly. Are there any questions? Right. We'll now practice this movement collectively. We'll only do the portion of the movement I just demonstrated. Are there any questions? Good. Squat! Attend! Top! Good! Right turn, body numbers. Squat! Watch! As you were. Have the squad practice the movement collectively as a squad. Squad! Watch! Number seven, pull your arms in. Once you are satisfied they have mastered the movement, instruct the members to practice individually. Now, I want you to practice individually on your own time. I will come around to check to make sure you have mastered this part of the movement. Carry on! This video demonstrates one method of individual practice that is commonly used. As the students practice individually, you should position yourself to observe each soldier. As the movement is performed, you should point out any faults and have the person correct them. Instructors frequently have problems with checking the students to ensure movements are performed properly. You must constantly check for and correct faults. You must continuously strive for perfection and must not allow even the smallest errors to go uncorrected. Once you have completed the individual checking, you then march to the front of the formation and observe the students collectively again to reconfirm. Right turn, by numbers, squad, one, two, as you are, squad, right turn, by numbers, squad, one, two, hold your arms in everywhere, ten, as you were, squad, pay attention this way, we'll now carry on with squad two. Teach every stage of the movement in this manner until the complete movement has been taught. Remember, in a drill lesson, the movements are practiced collectively, then individually, then collectively again. All that happens is the left knee is bent, the leg straightened in double quick time. The left foot is brought into the right, smartly assuming the position of attention. Right turn, high numbers. Squad! Two! Two! On a word command, right turn. These two movements are combined with the standard military pause of two, three. Each successive movement of the lesson is taught in the same manner. Each movement is demonstrated in its entirety, then broken down into stages. The stages are then practiced collectively, then individually, then collectively.
Turn! If you find as an instructor that the class is tiring or making constant mistakes, this means a rest period is required. Give them a short break so they can shake out any kinks or loosen up sore muscles. At the completion of the lesson, you will perform an evaluation of the squad. Now we'll carry on with the practical test that I promised you at the beginning of the lesson. In this portion of the test, you will judge the time. Pay close attention to my word of command. Squad, attention! Squad, squad! Right! Turn! Yeah! As you were! Finally, at the end of the lesson, restate the movements taught and the reasons for teaching it. Ensure you stress the importance of performing the movements properly. One, two, three, one! In this lesson, you have learned to perform the movements, turns and inclines at the halt, as well as about turns at the halt. These movements are used to change direction, but not formation. You will use these movements throughout your military career. State the level the students have achieved. Remember to praise them. With a drill period, one of your objectives is to instill a sense of pride and self-discipline. Finally, tell the students the next lesson they will be receiving and who will be instructing it. Are there any questions? Good. 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 So that's all Sergeant Cameron did it. A little preparation, a little practice. You're ready, Schultz. Go for it.